Hey, this is Atte from Omnium Gatherum, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey, what's up, guys? Episode 279 of Richard Metal Fan Interviews, calling from Zoom, and I'm here with Atte Pessonen from Omnium Gatherum and also Anger Cell. So how are you doing say, man? So good. Thank you for having me. Anytime, man. Anytime. So I kind of want to want to do is pretty much talk about like your musical history and sort of like talk about like the albums that you played on. So take it back to young Ate Pessonen. So kind of growing up in Finland, what were the first bands that got you into metal? What made you want to start playing drums? Well, I think the first metal band, actual metal band, was Nightwish. And yeah. uh the Bell album Fins. Wish. Yeah, yeah. And the album Wishmaster was probably like uh, the first big metal album for me. And then also, uh, well, Children of Budum, surprise, surprise, and uh, Dimu Borgir. So I think those were the first like metal bands that got me into metal. Yeah, it's cool because Children of Bodom were for me like those like first like that first band that got me into like more extreme music when I was like a teenager. But this is like even before I got into like death metal or even black metal as I got older. Yeah, yeah. For me, Puritanical, Puritanical Euphoric Misanthropia was the album that was like, I think it was released 2001. I was eight years old back then. Well, I mean, I was like, seven. What is so, this? I mean, I was yeah. only seven. I was, and I'm 30 now. So this is like before Melody was even on my radar back then. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was something totally new and, uh, really weird for eight year old. Atte. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I was like, so I was doing like my research on Metal Archives. So I believe one of your first bands, I believe, was uh, Zealot. So tell me about that, because I, I don't think nobody ever talks about that. Yeah, well, Zealot was, uh, if you know the band Whispered uh, from Finland. Yeah, uh, I've heard the, the name. That was sort of like yeah. the precursor. Yeah, so basically uh, that that's the band before it was Whispered. It was like, at first it was Zealots. And I think I was like 11 years old and we made this uh, three songs along demo. And uh, yeah, that was my first basically real uh, band project. Wow. Uh, uh, playing drums in 11, uh, 11 years old, it, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was learning everything back yeah. then. Yeah, it's very rare. You don't see, you see like a kid playing drums for for like a metal band. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> it was all new and weird. Also, yeah. And then I know know it's like you, it was like a few years or so. But then I I know you you joined up with the uh, Anger Cell in uh, twenty seventeen. Or were there any any bands even like before after like Whisper Whispered that you were a part of before joining up with Anger Cell? Well, not really. Uh, what I was doing uh, was doing like drum covers on YouTube, and also like I was studying percussion uh, back then. So nothing like too serious band stuff. Yeah, was going on. Yeah. So so, so what kind nothing. of inspired like the whole drum covers? Well. I've always been like uh, super motivated to learn different bands, like songs and like different kind of styles. And uh, back in then, when I didn't have anything, any mics or cameras or stuff, I just wanted to record somehow. And then I, I think I got like two mics at first, and after that, I got more gear, and uh, it kind of like started in a natural way like i just enjoyed like and still enjoy like recording by myself and uh even like doing the mixing stuff by myself so yeah yeah but then, then then of course you start doing the drum covers i still love some of like your covers of like freaking in white chapel is one of one of the ones oh. also like veil of maya kill switch engage uh, tesseract yeah, cool. like like you definitely like, beat the shit out of the drums thank you thank you anytime and then kind of flash forward a few years in 2017 you joined up with uh anger cell so how'd you get to know everybody uh 
hold on i i need to <laughs> i need to think about this how it all started i think it was like the guys found me online from like from the youtube covers and uh then basically the bass player uh sampa uh messaged me on facebook that they they are needing drummer and i was like sure let's try and uh and then all of a sudden we were rehearsing together and uh that's how it started yeah. very like natural way <laughs> yeah and then tell me about making that uh first ep bravery and chaos so what was sort of like the, the thought process making that being that was like your first release with the band uh i mean that was like uh the guys were composing all the songs i did the drum parts and then we recorded at sonic pump uh studios uh in helsinki and uh it was like nothing too uh deep <laughs> like it was we made the songs we recorded them and that's it so cool and then then of course flash forward into 2021 you joined up with uh, omnium gatherium so how'd you get to know like yuka and marcus and everybody uh well that that happened like uh mikko the bass player uh one day he called me and he was like uh can you do a few playthroughs from omnium songs of course i was wondering like what what's going on here but he was like saying me that make those well <laughs> and and send them to us and i was like sure i will and then i think i played gods go first and uh stormfront yeah i recorded those uh, and uh then i sent it to guys and uh after that we had a few beers together and all of a sudden we were rehearsing so basically the same way that in anger cell so like contacting me first then i'll do a few covers and then we'll meet up and uh start rehearsing yeah and did you and did you wanted to try to bring something new rhythmically to omnium gatherum that they all didn't have previously well yeah that's something uh that i've been aiming to like of course I have to keep the drum parts like original and not like make the band's music something totally different. Of course not, but I will try to get my my uh, own style, of course, there as well. And I think it will come like and it comes naturally also because uh, my style is obviously a little different than with the previous drummers. Yeah. And being as a drummer, because usually the drummer's job is to like keep the beat and the tempo, otherwise it'll turn into a friggin' bloodbath. But as a drummer, <laughs> or do, or do you usually have like a whole drum part written and the rest of the band writes to that? Or do you need to hear like what the riffs are do doing or the guitars in, in order to lay down your parts? Uh, I didn't quite catch that. Can I get it again? <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, Lee, 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 when it comes to recording drums, you need to hear get hear what the guitars are doing and orderly down your parts or do you usually have like a whole drum drum track like written and the rest of the band can write write according to that yeah usually uh the, the composing process goes like that uh when marcus or whoever basically marcus writes almost all the stuff uh he has some kind of drum track uh composed already and uh then i might modify it a little bit when it like then it has more my style on it and of course uh there are parts that has to be like played uh, maybe a little different way but mm, but usually those have the drum track Marcus composes the drum track and uh then i basically modify it a little bit and there might be a part that i i might su suggest that we do something totally different but yeah, that's how it is. Cool. And then tell me about making like your first record with Onion Gatherum Origin. That was definitely one of my favorite albums from 2021. So so tell me about like like that that being that was also like like your first record with Omnium. That was like really smooth. That's that's how I feel about that album because uh we had plenty of time 
uh, to rehearse together. I think it was we started doing that album during COVID, and uh, surprise, there wasn't no shows. There was no shows, and uh, yeah, that was really smooth. We had a lot of time, and also uh, I think we spent two days or three days at studio, uh, and it was like very very nice, uh, like recording session all over yeah and then then tell me about like like the touring cycle for that because i believe the first show time i <clears throat> i think i saw you play with the band was that you did that tour with the uh, elysian and black crown initiate so the show in the states so yeah. tell me about that was that like your first time ever playing in america yeah that was my first tour in the u.s and uh of course i was like a little nervous before the tour because i didn't know what to expect like because it was also, I think it was five weeks tour, so uh, it was kind of all new to me. I had I had done a few smaller tours with Habu Krun, uh, Finnish black metal band. Uh, we made a few tours, one in UK and one in uh, Baltics, but but this was basically my first longer tour, and uh, I was really excited. Of course, but nervous, and uh, it all ended up really well. That tour was really good, and uh, the shows were packed, and uh, it was all nice. Yeah, yeah, and well, so talk about like playing in in America for the first time on that tour. Like, what was like your favorite moments from that, and like, what's your like your favorite cities that you've been to so far? Ooh, that's a tough one. Well, I probably like the. The ones I remember the best, of course, the first show, the US tour was something that I will never forget because I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the one that comes to mind is the show in Dallas. Uh, it was outdoors, and it was raining, and it was really cold, and we actually had to like, skip one song from the set because there was some struggle with with uh with the gear so <laughs> that's something uh that i always remember <laughs> yeah yeah because i remember like seeing you play at in atlanta atlanta on that tour and i remember funny enough i actually had interviewed yuka and marcus beforehand and hence and, and seeing you, you play live is like like totally different than like listening to y'all so is there like a sim like a similar kind of like vibe to like like playing live versus like recording or are they kind of like completely separate uh i think that they're completely separate because when you're in the studio uh you're concentrating so so much on the playing of course you do that on live as well but uh but there are like you don't feel the crowd obviously in the studio so uh you don't get that en energy so that's the biggest difference probably mm. i enjoy both <laughs> yeah and then I noticed you also played with like a variety of different bands because I know you had like a Legion, which are more kind of technical death death metal. But then you also did did that tour with Elvite and Seven Spires, were kind of more kind of like in the folky folk metal kind of vibe. And then I know I last saw you this earlier this year on the seventy thousand tons of metal cruise. There's just all different types of metal. So so you I pretty yeah. much I feel like you kind of like draw different audiences. Like your Omnium Gathering is just like a band band that just has like just like one certain style or that appeals to fan base i feel like you can appeal to like any fan fan bases so is it fair to say like you ever notice like a different like crowd crowd reaction depending on like the t the tours that you play with or the bands that you play with yeah of course it varies like for example uh the legion tour or actually any tour you can like see that okay these guys are like fans of Allegion, these guys are fans of LYT, and uh, that's something I really enjoy when we have uh, different kinds of kinds of bands, because that usually brings new fans, and there are people in the crowd that never heard Omnium, for example, and uh, that's, that's really nice, yeah. Yeah, totally. And I feel like you could play with like any band. Hell, you could play with like Nickelback and people would still want to come see you guys. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. That would be really nice to have Nickelback. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. Hey, Chad, yeah. book, book them. <laughs>
<clears throat> yeah, but then of course, like like of course, last last year you released like the Slasher EP, which is just awesome. It's just like four songs, but just gets right to the point. Is that like something to uh, hold fans over till we wait for the follow up up to Origin, or is this just something like just like a one off kind of thing? Well, basically, uh, two songs uh, uh, from Slasher were like uh, we recorded those like. When we recorded Origin, so yeah, those those songs, Sacred and uh, Love Lorn. Yeah, yeah, those were <laughs> good that you remember. I don't. Uh, yeah, those were recorded during uh, recording Origin, and they were like leftovers. Uh, so yeah, is yeah. that what you asked? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then tell me about like making the song song Slasher. So where did the inspiration for that song come to be? uh that's a good question uh i have no idea <laughs> where, yeah. where that inspiration came but uh to me that is uh like uh how do you say it? it's like uh it has uh, the melody melody part of omnium but also um, it has like fast stuff going so it's a good combination yeah, and then, and then of course you also did a cover of uh, Michael Cimbello's "Maniac." Like, what inspired you to like like do a cover of his song? Well, we all like that song, and uh, that's basically the reason we we listened to that song together on tour bus, and then somebody uh, decided that maybe we should do cover of this song, and we did it. Yeah, yeah, totally, and then. And then being as it has been a few years since uh, Origin and stuff, so have you started working on the next Omnium Gatherum album? So what's, like, the status with that, if you're allowed to say? Uh, so, well, basically, new new stuff is brewing, and uh, we have already a few songs, and uh, that's something I will start uh, to work with soon as well, the drum parts. So it's all brewing and coming strong. Yeah, totally. And so kind of like also like in the end to sort of wrap things up, what's next for Onion Gatherum? I know you mentioned that you've already mentioned that you're working on slowly starting to work on the next album. Is just anything else in terms of like tours and stuff, if you're allowed to say? Well, yeah, we're uh, going to have next shows in Japan uh, in uh, September. And uh, there might be some other shows coming as well in Asia. And then we are having a tour with uh, Insomnium and uh, Hinaya in uh, January, if I remember correct, next year. So European tour. So those are the next shows. And as said, the new stuff is brewing. Awesome. So thank you, Ate, for this conversation. It's great to have you on my show. It's just any final words you want to say to the viewers that are watching this to close us out? Uh, enjoy your time. Have a good summer. Uh, be safe. <laughs> That's all. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Anytime, man. So, anybody, Ate Pesanen from Omnium Gadium and Anchor Cell, we'll see you next time.